Hey guys, Bad Infos here with a top 5 video. Here I'll show you my picks for the best games of 2008. This year was definitely not to my liking. Sure, it contains some amazing games, but the majority were pretty bad and choosing 5 for the list was not difficult. I hope you agree with the list. If you don't, let me know which games you would pick. Without further ado, here are the 5 best games released in the year 2008. Need for Speed Undercover For the longest time I have been a huge fan of Need for Speed. From the first game from 1994 to Carbon from 2006, I had almost no complaints. Every game added something new and was fun to play. Then came Undercover and this is the moment the NFS franchise went downhill. Don't get me wrong, Undercover is great, but lots of the changes were worse and from this point mostly bad decisions were followed. Undercover decided to add the cinematic storyline in the game. Gone were the picturesque showcases with dialogues from before. Honestly, I welcome the change. It was interesting watching real people talk about real cars. The story, however, was cringy to say the least. As the title suggests, you are an undercover cop whose job is to take down a few street racers. It sounds like a great idea, but soon you realize that it's nothing more than a poorly made and cheesy story. I guess I should not expect much from a racing game, but it definitely was not to my liking. Speaking of racing, however, this is where the game shines. Well, not entirely. We have a free open world. Unfortunately, there's really nothing to do in it. Races are hidden in menus, and all you can do in free roam is to do police chases. They are essential and a very interesting part of the game, sure, but not so much if that's all you do. The handling is very stiff and that's really good. This way you have a lot more control of your car. Escaping these pesky police officers is a breeze. The more you progress, the better your driving skill increases and you can drive faster cars. Races are short and easy, cop chases are fun and customization is on point. Race Driver Grit I have been a fan of racing games way before I got my first PC in 2002. I've played what feels like 50 before I played Grit. I have always done it in the same way though, using a keyboard with a camera angle behind the car. It was my go-to setup for every single racer. Then came Grit and all that changed. This was the first game which made me want to play in first person mode with the in-car view. It's the first and I'm pretty sure the last time I did it in a racing game. The interiors are gorgeous with lots of detail thrown in. The driving physics are spectacular. Drifting around corners feels real and responsive. Cars take damage if you crash into a wall and after a heavy crash you are no longer able to race. Well, unless you use flashbacks. Yep, we have them here. I'm actually strongly against them when racing. However, in grit, I am actually not. I don't know what's wrong with this game. It just makes me get out of my comfort zone and like certain things which I simply despise in other racers. I mentioned some of them already like the in-car view and the flashbacks, but what else? Most importantly, the real-life tracks. I find racing games with closed-off real-life equivalent tracks with cheering crowds on the side extremely boring. Grit is different though. Everything I hear about them does not apply here. The crowds are cool, cornering feels real with a keyboard, your buddy on the radio has a nice voice. Yeah, I can't even think of a complaint about the game. It's flashy, fast, spectacular and very fun to play. Grand Theft Auto 4. And here comes the biggest disappointment in video gaming in my life. 
Oh, you haven't heard the story? Well, let me tell ya. Many of you know that San Andreas is my favorite game of all time. I played it every day for years, a little after it came out. I knew the mechanics, story, missions, cheats, whatever, like the back of my hand. Then GTA 4 got announced, and I got incredibly hyped. Every day I was thinking about it. I followed many websites, read a ton of articles, wrote on forums, and was hoping to get just one more picture one more small two seconds video of it. This went on for months until it released. When it did, the cars handled terribly, the city was bland, dark and boring, every extra feature added in San Andreas was removed in this one, movement was worse, camera controls, weapon variety, lack of full character customization, decent cheats. Should I go on? It felt like a huge slap to the face after following the development for months. The only reason why it's on the list is because it has one of the best stories ever told in a video game. You play as Nico Bellic, a relatable slav who seeks revenge. The characters he comes into contact with are very fun to converse with. The events that happen are also very interesting. If they slapped this story on any other engine, city, physics or whatever, it would be the best game ever made. Not to mention the thousands of bucks with the PC version where it crashes for no reason, needing to create multiple accounts in order to save your progress, malicious DRM slapped in there for good measure, save games getting corrupt, constant frame drops. Yeah, the game is a mess and if I can be honest for just a second, don't play it. Seriously, if you're a PC gamer, do not play it. It's not worth all the trouble just for an amazing story. I'm personally very conflicted if I even should place it here, but I think it deserves a spot. A game with so much personality and character I would remember 20 years from now definitely should be in the top 5 list. I'll have reached the goal I'm dreaming of. Fallout 3. This is the first RPG I have ever played. I tried it when it came out and was amazed by the beautiful world Bethesda has created. Ruins everywhere and people who seemingly suffered a lot in their lifetime. The game did a fantastic job of immersing the player in this forgotten world, filled with monsters and corrupt people who are just trying to survive. Well, I played it for maybe 5-6 hours and started to get really annoyed by the carry weight. I couldn't have the freedom of picking whatever I want, so I did the stupidest thing imaginable. I cheated. Biggest mistake ever. After that, I was carrying thousands of cans, weapons, armor and all sorts of other junk. I also never got any radiation sickness and I could heal anytime. The game became incredibly boring and I abandoned it. I killed the game which brought me so much joy. Years passed, and when 2006 came out, I played it from start to finish. Sure, I played other amazing RPGs by then, like Fallout New Vegas and Skyrim, and this was a bit worse than them, but it was still an incredible game. Fallout 3 made me realize that cheats are never the answer, and that if I can't face my problem without them, then I should not even try. The day I abandoned Fallout 3, I swore not to cheat unless I have already finished a game. Crisis War Hit I don't care what you say, I know this is an expansion which has the same story, characters and engine as Crisis. This expansion is way better than every actual game I mentioned so far. In fact, you know what? Forget what I said. This is my new top 5 list of 2008. Sue me. So what is Crisis Warhead? It's basically Crisis, but with everything fixed. Everything I disliked about the original game was made a lot better here. You can pick up ammo automatically by walking over it. There's no infuriating zero gravity level. The main protagonist is no longer a soulless brick, completely devoid of emotions. You play a psycho. In Crisis, he took off on a separate mission. Well, in this game, you play that. 
certain mission, there are a lot more areas to explore. Gorgeous and huge maps. Some have Koreans, others have aliens. You can even use a hovercraft if you're tired of walking around. The freedom is still here. You get an objective and it's up to you to complete it however you please. It's great for any type of person. For the cowards, a stealth approach is viable. For the veterans, maximum strength would be perfect. And I guess for the biggest cowards, you can run away from the danger with maximum speed. Personally, I like mixing all playstyles, well, except when I play on Delta difficulty, where staying cloaked all the time is pretty much mandatory. The cutscenes are better this time around, and that's partly because Psycho is actually an interesting character. Some cutscenes make no sense though, like this one where Psycho doesn't put on his helmet, or when he stays there contemplating life for what feels like 3 minutes. Overall, Crisis and Crisis Warhead are a definite must to play, no matter if you're into FPS or not. You can avoid all the danger if shooting is not your thing. And that's it from me guys, those are my favorite games released in the year 2008. If you wanna see my favorite ones in any other year then click on the screen or check the description. Subscribe to my channel for more lists and other gaming videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.